this is how you make a post not move without concrete. Yeah, you pack it down. And that's what I'm doing right now. You just put a little bit of soil in. And you pack it all down. Okay. Compress it. Little bits at a time. That is pretty solid and I'm not even done yet. Yeah, it's only halfway. If the soil is always loose around the post, then the post will always move. Basically. by the time he he pounds the soil down and we get all the soil back in there's not really much soil left over which you think there would be with the post but the soil gets more compressed than what it is before he does the hole if you're not vibrating the ground when you're packing it in you're not doing it hard enough Just like pull the wire towards me. Yeah.
this guy the fence whisperer. Likes to whisper to the fence. No. Newspaper dog? Why are you eating the newspaper? I feel like if you was, uh, if we used to, if we got a newspaper delivered, <laughs> he, would it. he would shred it. Yeah. This is the uh, super smooth fencing trick right here. And you're only pulling it like that because it's a kind of a short section. It makes more sense to use the side by side if you're pulling a longer section. Yeah, this one you can pull by hand as long as you've got enough power behind you. This is this is kind of not how you should do it, but how you should do it. <laughs> DIY Dave. <clears throat> Fences for you. Can you figure that out yet? Who's going to tell him? Are you going to tell him?
que eso es bonito en Chihuahua. Uh, you need to bring it back towards the house so a uh, hair. Right that. Yeah, that's good right there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's Okay, so um, we are not done the fencing completely. There is a lot of other things that we need to do. Um, but I'm just gonna take you around and show you what we have done. And if you have any fencing questions, uh, Dave uh, used to be a fencing guy, so um, <clears throat> you know, if you have any questions, he could probably uh, answer them for you. Anyways, I'm gonna show you um, what we got done so far. We're so close to being done. There's just a couple sections left to do but it's mainly uh, done. And uh, if you're wondering why we fenced everything, um, is that after all the attacks that we've had um, with the fox taking out the chickens and stuff, um, this is our chicken yard, or, you know, not officially chicken yard, but where, where our chickens like to hang out. So the chickens will be kept in there and we'll be kept in there with our livestock dog, Bailey. So, the fence is mainly to contain him and uh, the chickens. So um, that being said, we still need to add chicken wire to like the gates here and stuff so the chickens don't pop through. Um, you know, like I said, there's lots of like little things that need to be done. So anyways, I'm gonna show you what we got so far. <laughs> so this is at the end of our driveway and we put two gates there so that uh, we had extra room because you kind of have to, because um, our trailers are over there, you kind of have to turn around, uh, or not turn around, but go around that bend there. So we put two gates there just to give extra room. And we've had this gate for a couple of years and it's green. You can see the green that it was. And uh, we just, painted it we're not done painting it. it started raining so we had to stop but we painted it and it kind of matches so close enough it's not quite the shade but it's close enough inside the pen um so one of the things that we're gonna do is that we're gonna add um another fence with a gate that comes along here that splits this pen in half basically um, just so that if we have anything other than chickens, they're not messing around with the wellhead and they're not 
eating the flowers, and it's also kind of a separate area that if Bailey is not friendly, unsupervised around other animals, or if we get another livestock dog, is kind of a separate training area. So that is a plan there. And this is one of the sections that we haven't done yet. Like I said, there's just like little sections that need to be completed. So we need to fence from here behind my car and over to the shed here. So it's to that tree basically. So it's not that big of a section. And then this is our field access so this is a 16 foot gate so we put that there just so we had all the room that we ever needed the gate swings this way so it'll swing against the barn so it'll be completely out of the way um you know if you're coming and going uh from there and so that's a 16 and if you're wondering about the size of these two gates it's a 20 foot span uh, one is 12 foot and the other one is uh, 8 foot. Now, behind the barn, um, we fenced. Look at these nice apples. We fenced here. We're going to add to the back of the barn here eventually. So this might end up being a gate too, just for like a stall, you know, like an animal stall, but you know, we are not there yet. <laughs> this fence runs all the way along the back, way down there, and I'll show you where that comes out. Sadly, our chickens have not been out of their coop since the fox attack, which really sucks for them. We only have four left of the adult ones. Um, but we just can't really risk it, so we're just kind of waiting to uh, let them free when they can have this whole area and have uh, Bailey on patrol. So, over here, we put a fence along here. This is an eight-foot gate. It is perfectly wide enough for the side-by-side -side to go through. Our septic bed is over here. So for those who said, oh, why didn't you put a bigger gate on? There's absolutely no reason to put a bigger gate on because anything that's basically bigger than this eight foot gate is probably gonna damage the septic bed. So um, that's why we just kind of went with a small gate there. So we got this fancy latch that didn't really work the way that we wanted it to, but we got it to work. So, that's how we come in and out. <laughs> and, close the gate and it latches if you, if you uh, swing it hard enough. And uh, just for decorative purposes, we put that there. Gonna put lights on it maybe. Looks kind of neat. And uh, so the fence is attached to the corner of the brooder house. Hi, chickies. Chicky chickies and turkeys. And then this is the other side of the back fence when I showed you over by the barn. So the only thing that we have to figure out is how to fence from this post to uh, to the brooder, uh, which is over there. So, um, but do it safely that a fox isn't gonna sneak in. So, cause we can't really take it to um, to the corner here because, well, maybe we could, but we just don't want, like, a fox jumping up onto this. I don't know. We're going to have to figure this out. The other idea was to go diagonally over to the other corner. But anyways, those are the two sections that we have left to do. So they're relatively small sections. And, uh, I mean, that the other one will go pretty easy, but this one we got to kind of think about. 
Bailey, you're on the wrong side of the fence. <laughs> yeah, well, what stuck, are you doing? He stuck around. He stuck around. <laughs> so here I was blabbing about how we were going to do this section. And uh, we started doing this section. So we're going to bring it right over to where the chicks are along the fence there for now but in the future we might kind of change it up but Bailey's already discovered how to get out on this open side so um you know we'll close it off anyways just this little section and then after this we just have um another little section to do and then the perimeter is pretty much done Okay, so this section is done. One more section, right? Yep. One more little section that hopefully won't be as complicated as this corner was. Whew, the end is near for fencing for now. Mr. Bailey. <laughs> he says, I am guarding the gate. Are you guarding the gate? Thanks for watching. See you next time.